Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, for our redemption, you gave your only begotten Son to the death of the cross, and by his glorious resurrection delivered us from the power of our enemy. Grant us so to die daily to sin that we may evermore live with him in the joy of his resurrection through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first lesson is from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 10. Peter began to speak to Cornelius and the other Gentiles. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. The message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil. For God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Let Israel now proclaim his mercy endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. There is a sound of exultation and victory in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed, 
The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. The Lord has punished me sorely, but he did not hand me over to death. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter them, I will offer thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. He who is righteous may enter. I will give thanks to you, for you answered me, and have become my salvation. The same stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. On this day the Lord has acted, we will rejoice and be glad in it. The second reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 15. I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you, which you in turn received, in which you also stand, through which also you are saved, if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you of first importance what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the disciples. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is within me. Whether that that it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to believe. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome bought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, Who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place where they laid him. But go and tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ.
Christ is risen, the Lord is risen indeed, Alleluia. Happy great feast of the resurrection, happy Easter 2021. It is so good to be together here in this hopeful moment, moment even if it is only online. While it is every Sunday that we Christians celebrate Christ's resurrection, a celebration that reminds us weekly of the hope to which we are called. Today is special. Good news comes today, at the end of a season of reflection and penitence, Lent. Good news comes at the end of a week of traversing our Lord's end of earthly life, the end of the life of the one we call the Savior, at the end of Holy Week. The resurrection is a powerful sign of hope that God is with us even in dark times, that death does not have the last word, that we are never beyond God's love, and that all can be redeemed with God's help. Now essentially, considering the year we have all had, our Easter celebration today comes after some hardship, wherein we have adjusted our lives to new realities related to a virus. We have had to be vigilant with changing protocols to keep everyone safe over three surges of illness in this country. With vaccinations, we are hoping to avoid a fourth surge. We have had to be flexible in how we work and creative in how we care for ourselves and each other. We have shared collectively in more than enough grief and loss. Our losses have not just been pandemic-related losses. We also have had not altogether fully grieved deaths of loved ones in the regular course of our lives. And we have had the grief of moments of losing our way as a nation. We have shuddered at the prevalence of acts of hatred and violence within our borders, barely able to view the videos of those who would hurt or maim or even kill others who differ from them in thought or appearance. And we are still in a season of political combat as sport that would deny the rights and dignity of others, including their right to vote. And because we have just gone through Lent and Holy Week, we have the chance to compare that story of Jesus' suffering to the story that we are living through right now and dare to consider the part we each play in our own unfolding drama. Sometimes as those who suffer and other times as those who cause suffering. If we are paying attention at all, we are confronting our own pernicious capacity to choose ourselves at the expense of others. So this year, of all years, we need the good news of the resurrection. Now the resurrection for us Christians is the most powerful expression of God's love in action. But it takes willing hearts for it to become more than just a story in our lives, to become an invitation to new life. When death did not hold Jesus, we theologians like to say that the universe shifted. It shifted at the cross when love was willing to die, and it shifted at the tomb when death did not hold it. 
death does not hold us either. Even in the darkest times, God is with us at every moment, giving us opportunities to turn and acknowledge our need and receive the new possibilities for life. It takes our active participation. Resurrection is not a one-time event, but an ongoing process of living with hope. The story of the resurrection continues in our own lives. It is our story, too. Today's gospel story lets us know that it is okay for us if we are slow to comprehend fully what the resurrection means. It is hard to catch up with a shifting universe, after all, is it not? My mother lived with us the last seven years of her life. After my father's death, she had struggled with her own health and had lived near my twin brother in Florida, and then had lived for a while with my younger sister in Seattle before coming to live with us. Suffice to say that she was not always easy, <laughs> had strong opinions about the people her children had married, and had a tenacity um, that, that was challenging. She spoke her mind, and not always at the best times. Suffering with a chronic illness and very weak, she decided eventually to enter hospice care after one of her frequent, frequent visits to the hospital. By then, well informed about hospice, mother had decided not only to refuse medicines but also to stop eating. Our promise to her was that if at any moment she decided to change her mind and to try to get well and come home, that we would support her but we would support her whatever her decision was. So I called my siblings who came to see her. And after emotional visits, my two brothers, my sister, my husband Stephen and I, were having a late dinner at the house when the phone rang. Stephen answered and spoke with my mother's nurse. She was requesting a favorite drink. Remembering that there was buttermilk in our refrigerator, she was asking for some. Well, you should have seen the faces, the expressions on my siblings' faces. Exhausted were they, having flown across the country from different directions, having just adjusted to my mother's impending death, deeply engaged in the process of their own leave-taking, saying their goodbyes, even the tiniest prospect of a great reversal in that drama was overwhelming to them. Without speaking the words, it was clear what they were thinking. No, 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 no. Not after all this. We are finally saying goodbye and getting comfortable with that. Oh, please, God, please. Now she wants to eat again and maybe live? The possible shift in the trajectory of my mother's life was too much for them. I imagine that the response of those women on that first Easter morning at that empty tomb of Jesus was much the same. Having reconciled themselves to Jesus' death, the empty tomb must have been just a little too much. But by the way, with my mother, well, she loved buttermilk, and when Stephen asked her if she wanted to start eating again and come home or stay with her decision, she stead, said very clearly, stay with my decision, but oh, that buttermilk was good. The resurrection unnerves us. It topples our assumptions of how life is supposed to be, reverses expectations, and it literally turns our world upside down. In our predominantly Christian culture, we too easily have turned the resurrection from a great shift in the universe into a domesticated spring ritual. It may be a stretch theologically for us to connect the Easter bunny with the empty tomb, but for retailers, it's quite easy to connect the two and to move us from a challenging world turned upside down to a fuzzy world of bunnies and chocolates. Easier to celebrate with 
pastel-colored Easter eggs and hats and pretty dresses than to embrace a world where the foundational assumptions about life and hope rest on the story of the guy who got raised from the dead. And speaking of the Easter Bunny, here's a story for you. A man and his six-year-old son were driving to church on Easter morning when they accidentally hit the Easter Bunny who was hopping along the road carrying a basket full of Easter eggs. They could hear the thud and they got out of the car and there lay the Easter Bunny lifeless. Unconsolable, the little boy wailed and wailed and cried out and said, Oh no, the Easter Bunny is dead and we killed him. And feeling totally helpless, the father said, Wait, 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 wait here, I have an idea. And he went to the trunk of his car and he opened it and he pulled out a spray can. And he ran over to the lifeless bunny and he sprayed him all over with whatever was in the can. In a short while, miraculously, the Easter bunny hopped up. He looked around for his basket, he picked it up and headed down the road again. He hopped for a little while and then stopped and waved. And he hopped a little farther and turned again and waved. And he kept turning and waving until he was out of sight. The little boy said, wow, dad, that was something. What was in that can? The father showed the can to his son and together they read the label. Hair spray gives new life to hair and restores permanent wave. <laughs> we are not the only ones with a resurrection story. Mark's resurrection story is the most curious of the four Gospels. It seems to end mid-thought. After all the drama of Holy Week, of the pathos of unwanted crucifixion and death, there are just eight short verses about what happened next. And even they reveal the distinct pattern of Jesus' followers being just like us, not truly understanding the meaning of his crucifixion, death, and resurrection. The ending, with the women fleeing the empty tomb, terrorized and amazed, and not doing as the man dressed in the white robe instructed them to do, to go and tell his disciples. Instead, they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. Boom, the ending of the Gospel of Mark. A story that up until then had demanded a sense of urgency from the reader. Only half finished. And what is it with the women? After all, Everyone, including the 12 disciples, betray or desert Jesus, but it was the women who stayed to watch the crucifixion. It was the women who helped Joseph of Arimathea take down Jesus' battered body from the cross. It was the women who were up early the day after the Passover, coming to fulfill the burial rituals, caring for his long dead body. And in this gospel, it was the women who themselves, like all the others, fled. It was the women who, in Mark's account, spoke no further, for they were afraid. This half-finished ending of Mark's gospel may be an accurate reflection of what happened on that first Easter day. It also may be an invitation for us as Jesus followers to complete the other half of the ending as those first disciples completed it so long ago. For we would not be gathered here this morning if those women fleeing in terror and amazement had remained mute. God amazed them and terrorized them 
all at the same time with a shift in the universe that they could barely comprehend. And perhaps understandably, they needed some time to fully understand what had happened and what it meant for their lives. Those women at some point did adjust to the shift in the universe. They did comprehend the power of the resurrection and their lives were forever changed because the Son of God did not stay dead. Clearly those women told the disciples and it took the disciples themselves some time. In fact, a few post-resurrection appearances by the resurrected Jesus himself to be convinced before they allowed their universe to totally shift. But totally shift it did. The resurrection changed their lives forever too. The force of God's love expressed in that one action of death-defying bursting from the tomb, propelled 11 of the 12 disciples eventually to give over their own lives to death for the sake of that love that had transformed their lives and the chance to tell the story to others. And so, now it is our turn to complete the ending of this half-finished account of Jesus' resurrection, to tell the story in our own time as the followers of Jesus. It may take us our whole lifetimes to comprehend fully the good news of the resurrection, but with willing hearts and by humbly turning to God in each moment, we will be living out the story of the power of God's love to shift the universe. And by our word or our example and sharing it with others, we will complete the story. May it be so for you and for me. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people may be found on page 387 in the Book of Common Prayer. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church, that we all may be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Eugene and Robert, our bishops, Tracy, our priest, and all bishops, priests, 
and deacons, that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, that there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake, that our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on Cameron, Eleanor, Jeannie, Paul, Mary Alice, Susan, Sue, Ann and Mike, Judy, Tara, James, Jim, Bob, Andrea, Charlie, Bob, Dorothy, Eddie and Janet, Wendy, Emma, Paulette, and everyone who is suffering with coronavirus and all those who suffer from any grief or trouble, that they may be delivered from their distress. <clears throat> Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. We pray for Keona Looking Bill in her discernment of her vocation. We pray for those families not yet reunited who were separated at our borders. I ask your thanksgivings for all those providing necessary services for us during this pandemic, especially Mark, Jean, Kara, and Shane, for Connor Hankin and Leah Chapman, and all those who serve in our military. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church, and give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign now and forever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you, and also with you. Peace. The Lord's peace, everyone. We have just a few announcements. First of all, welcome to everyone near and far on this holiest of Christian days. Our Easter offering this year is designated for the American Friends of the Episcopal Diocese of Jerusalem, so we ask you to make contributions either online or by sending your Easter offering to the church office. Um, we want to thank all of our musicians who have helped to make this celebration very special. We want to thank Ben Buchanan and Miranda Brugman, Nathan Hawsey, J.C. Lugo, Jared Hancock, Nick Reeder, Jahi Alexander, Najet Abulhadi, and all of you who are singing at home and joining in with us. Um, even though we are not together in the same room, our voices are being lifted heavenward together, I am convinced. Now, I also want to thank all of you who participated in our Lenten collection. Um, it was wonderful. Over 75 families um, made contributions, including some monetary contributions, which allowed us to deliver food to the guardian angel and to provide for food this week for 100 families. So thank you very much. And also, I want to say that during this, East, this Easter season, we're going to be studying together the book of Cast. Judd Anderson is going to lead the discussions. Um, the, they will be on Zoom on Wednesday evenings, April 28th and May 26th. And finally, we also have some birthdays this week. We, we will pray for Doreen Sichting, for Willa Hurley, for Adam Sampson and Bill Groves, Robert Hopkins and Ann Martin. Watch over your children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. 
Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And in their hearts, may your peace, which passes understanding, abide all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Yours, O Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the victory, and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. Yours, O Lord, is the kingdom, and you are exalted as head over all.
be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death, he has destroyed death. And by his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension. We offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The disciples knew the Lord Jesus in the breaking of the bread. The disciples knew the Lord Jesus in the breaking of the bread. The bread which we break, Alleluia, is the communion of the body of Christ. The disciples knew the Lord Jesus in the breaking of the bread. One body are we, Alleluia, for though many we share one bread. The disciples knew the Lord Jesus in the breaking of the bread. The gifts of God for the people of God Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. And now a prayer for those who gather with us from afar. In union, O Lord, with your faithful people at this and every altar of your church on this high holy day where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, we pray on behalf of those gathered with us from afar since they cannot now receive your body and blood sacramentally, we ask you to come spiritually into their hearts. Cleanse and strengthen them with your grace, Lord Jesus, and let them never be separated from you in this life or in the life to come. Amen. Hallelujah. 
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now may the God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do God's will, working in each of you that which is well-pleasing in God's sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest on each of you and those you love this day and forevermore. Amen.
forth in the name of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia.